Barbados is the strongest demon king of all time known in mythology, but he can't stand being alone. Barbados longs for a normal life and then decides to reincarnate. In the future, he lives as a villager known as Mihir Ard. The very powerful and feared demon king Varvados decides to be reincarnated as a human. He later returns as a boy named Ard Mihir, the son of Jack and Carla Mihir. On his 10th birthday, Jack and Carla throw a party for Ard where the two ask about their only son's dream. Ard thinks that he wants to have a friendly relationship looking for someone strong and not afraid of him. Even though in his previous life it was impossible for a human to speak directly to a demon king, Ard considers that times have changed and now he is just an ordinary human. From his bedroom window, Ard notices three boys playing outside. He hasn't had time to greet them, but the three of them are already scared of him and hurriedly leave. Ard suspects that even though he has incarnated, he still has the majesty of a demon king and makes people afraid of him. Deciding to make a move, Ard goes to the city to look for friends and hide in an alley. When he sees three girls walking towards him, Ard is attacked by extraordinary nervousness, which makes him amazed, considering that in his previous life he even dared to fight God without fear. The three girls stop near Ard for a moment before running scared. Ard tries hard to fight his nervousness and stands up straight to call the girls. He asks them to be his friends and promises to give them half the world. But this effort only makes the girls scared even more, and in the end they run away. Frustrated by this rejection, Ard goes into the forest and destroys several trees with his strength to vent his anger. After returning, Ard sits alone and is approached by Old Hyde. Ard asks what he should do to have friends because he tried all the tricks, but they all ended in failure. When Old Hyde wants to give him a solution, Ard thinks it is a great spell or a super sophisticated political strategy. But Old Hyde tells him that to have friends, Ard only needs to be friendly and polite to whoever he is talking to. Noting the suggestion, Ard enthusiastically rushes back to the city. He approaches the children and tries to talk to them. Unfortunately, even though Ard has behaved friendly and polite, they are still scared and end up running away. This makes Ard frustrated and begins to consider destroying the world. Annoyed, he wipes out the hordes of monsters that come near him. At that moment, Ard hears a girl's scream from the direction of the forest and rushes there to check on her. There he finds a girl his age fighting against an ancient wolf and manages to defeat it. Ard approaches the girl and tries to talk to her, but he has difficulty and decides to ask if she wants to be his friend. At first, Ard thinks his efforts are successful, but the girl looks almost crying and turns away. When he comes home, Ard is surprised to find Old Hyde still at his house with the girl who fought with the ancient wolf earlier. He then finds out that the girl's name is Irina, the daughter of Old Hyde, his parents' best friend. In the hope of being friends like their parents, Ard chases Irina to persuade her to be his friend. Even though he is continuously rejected, Ard doesn't give up, and on Irina's birthday, he gives the girl a bouquet of roses, but Irina, who is annoyed, burns Ard with her magic. One night, when Irina is fighting against a monster in the forest, Ard comes to pick her up. Irina refuses and runs away, but Ard catches up with her easily. In his room, Ard studies all the strategies he has done to make Irina his friend and starts to run out of ideas. Suddenly, he hears a scream and rushes to check. Ard sees residents running around in fear of being attacked by a group of goblins. He approaches his father who is fighting to ask what's happening. Jack then asks Ard to stay at home and tells him that the dungeon core is going berserk. At the time, Olhide comes in panic and tells Jack that Irina has not returned from the forest and asks Jack for a favor. Ard proposes to find Irina and promises to bring her home. In the mountain, a horde of goblins surround Irina and tell her to call her friends for help. Irina responds, saying she doesn't have any friends and she begins to remember the children her age who avoided her and called her a monster. Remembering this unpleasant experience, Irina thinks that her life is boring. Irina throws away her sword and surrenders herself to the goblin. As the goblin is about to finish her off, fear attacks Irina and she begs to be saved. At the moment, Ard comes to attack the goblins. Before he approaches Irina, Ard is very happy to hear Irina calling his name for the first time and tells her that he has come to help her. Irina thinks that Ard will not be able to overcome the goblins and tells him to leave. However, she is shocked when Ard uses his strength and is able to slaughter all the goblins. Ard then approaches Irina and stretches out his hand to help the girl up. Irina refuses and asks why Ard saved her. She starts crying and expresses the painful feelings of loneliness she has felt all this time. Ard can understand Irina's feelings and therefore he wants to be friends with her, but Irina still refuses and believes that one day Ard will betray her like her old friend. Ard says that he won't do that because in his previous life he betrayed his best friend, which made him regret it. Ard reveals that he wants to have an eternal friendship with Irina and promises to never hurt her. Finally, Irina accepts Ard's helping hand and is willing to be his friend. 
Long story short, several years have passed, Ard and Irina have grown into teenagers. One morning when he wakes up from his sleep, Ard is surprised to find Irina sleeping next to him. He hurriedly gets up and protests Irina's actions for breaking into a man's room, but Irina ignores Ard's scolding and invites him to join the Magic Academy. At the Loville Magic Academy, the principal Gold accepts Ard's and Irina's enrollment happily, learning that they are the children of the three heroes. Due to their great achievements in eliminating hundreds of goblins in the goblin attack several years ago, Gold exempts Ard and Irina from the practical exam but still requires them both to take the written exam. Ard and Irina go to the field to see the announcement of the exam results. Irina is able to find her name easily on the board and makes Ard worry that he will fail, but Irina then spots Ard's name at the bottom and when he checks it, Ard is confused as to why he can pass with a score of zero. Gold approaches Ard and Irina and congratulates them. He even compliments Ard's answers and calls him a genius. Ard still finds it confusing and Gold explains his answers were far beyond their hypothesis. Irina defends a succubus named Ginny, who is being bullied by Elrado Spencer, the son of a well-known duke. Elrado emphasizes that Ginny's family is the servant of his family and tells Irina to stay away from his business. Ard steps in and demands Elrado to apologize, but Elrado challenges Ard to have a match, and if he loses the duel, he will obey Ard's words. Just then, their instructor, Lady Olivia, arrives and interrupts the commotion. Ard is surprised to find Olivia, one of his generals from his previous life, and decides to hide his past life as the Demon Lord. Barvatos is worried that Olivia is angry because he left to reincarnate. During their duel, Ard realizes that Elrado has been hiding his magical ability behind the impressive name of his spell. Deciding to show the power of the real Giga Flare, Ard attacks Elrado and then defeats him. Olivia suspects Ard of using a lost skill that has not been seen since the Demon King Varvados. Olivia then sends the students to hunt monsters in the dungeon. Ard and Irina form a team with Ginny, but because of Elrado's bullying over the years, Ginny becomes very lacking in self-confidence. Ard then teaches Ginny the lost skill magic script, which makes spell casting faster. They are attacked by the dungeon boss, a minotaur. Ard then allows Ginny to strike a fatal blow with the magic script, and he feels proud of her. Olivia is impressed with Ginny who is able to defeat the dungeon boss. Ginny then tells her that it is all thanks to Ard who taught her magic scripts. Seeing Olivia suspicious of this, Ard quickly makes up an excuse that they worked together to defeat the dungeon boss and almost got killed. Elrado mocks Ard's party and Ginny, who doesn't accept this, dares to fight him. She slaps Elrado and together with Irina, they humiliate Elrado in front of everyone. Ard is happy to reflect on the beautiful friendship he has with the two girls. He is about to go home but gets panicked when Olivia suddenly stops him and invites Ard to talk privately. Olivia brings Ard to Gold's room and he is asked to participate in the student battle event to impress the Queen who will be in attendance, but Ard flatly refuses. Trying to coax Ard into reconsidering, Gold mentions that the event is an opportunity for the school to get a bigger budget. Finally, Ard says he will reconsider the offer. After leaving the principal's room, Ard begins to think that if he refuses the request, his scholarship will be revoked or worse, he may be expelled and lose his academic life with Irina. However, Ard becomes confused because if he fights in front of Olivia, his previous life as a demon king may be exposed. Just then, Ginny approaches Ard and asks to go on a date with her. Irina barges into the scene and wants to be a part of the date and Ginny happily accepts, noting she doesn't want to monopolize Ard. Ginny also suggests that Ard start his harem and Irina has no clue what that is, so Ginny informs her and upon learning of it, flatly rejects the idea. Afterward, the group goes on their date together in the town and starts things off by watching a play. The play was a recount of the former demon lord Varvados, and during it, both Ginny and Lydia embrace Ard, while Ard is left perplexed by the interpretation of his former life and his late lover Lydia as a sweet and romantic figure. After the play, Ginny leads the group to a place to eat and en route to their destination, Ard overhears a group of cloaked individuals talking about the queen. It's then decided that they'd all tail a group of people and they follow them into the sewers, where they find the group standing in front of a giant circle. There, Ard notices that it is a trap to lure them. The three of them are warned not to mess around if they don't want to be killed, but considering the situation, Ard believes that the group intends to capture them alive. Just then, the leader activates the magical circle setting Ard ablaze. However, Ard is unscathed from the fire and destroys the circle with his own spell, and then proceeds to take out the remaining men except the leader. Ard says that if he tells him why he is targeting them, he will not act harshly. The leader refuses and reveals his true form as a demon in disguise. The demon casts a lighting burst to create a hole in the ceiling to escape. Ard wants to chase him, but Irina and Ginny tell him the demon can fly and it must have disappeared when they get out of there. 
Ard pursues him, much to the girl's surprise seeing him flying. On the surface, the demon takes a little girl hostage, which causes panic among the people in the surrounding area. However, Ard assures the people that all will be fine and he will punish the demon who disturbed humans. The demon is confused when it finds its hostage disappeared. The demon asks Ard's identity and doesn't believe that he is a mere villager. The demon attacks Ard but learning its attack cannot hurt Ard it intends to escape. Ard doesn't let the demon off and casts a spell to finish the demon off. The townspeople thank Ard and praise him the great sage for his heroic act. The following day, Ard, Irina, and Ginny meet with Queen Rosa, and Irina is shown to be acquainted with her. Rosa then offers to marry Ard to tease Irina, but in the end she gives the budget to the academy and promotes Ard and Irina to the Pentagon class, while Ginny is promoted to the Triangle class. Meanwhile, more of the cloaked figures discuss the previous failure they launched against Ard, but are confident they'll accomplish their true goal regardless. Elsewhere, Ard refuses to take part in the battle event, disappointing Gold who wishes that Ard can impress the nobles to promote him to be the instructor at the academy. In his room, Ard contemplates Irina on his bed and is visited by Ginny who is trying to seduce Ard and Irina, who was still upset about earlier that day decides to visit Ard in his room, but walks in at the moment Ginny tries to make a move on Ard. This leads to a contentious argument between Irina and Ginny which ends in a proposed duel between the two, but Ard stops and scolds them having the two sit down and apologize to each other. Just then, Jessica barges into the room after eavesdropping on their conversation and proposes to settle their differences in the upcoming battle event. It's also mentioned that it'd also be an optimal opportunity for Ard to become an instructor at the academy. On the day of the battle, Ard is perplexed to find his parents and Olhide present as the special judge. Having learned magic script from Ard, Irina, and Ginny win the match against other students, before the duel between the two begins, demons reveal themselves within the audience and wreak havoc around the Colosseum. As Jessica informs Ard and Olivia, demons are also targeting the outside of the arena as well. Jack, Carla, Olhide, Jessica, Olivia, and Ginny fight against the demons. As Olhide helps Irina and Ginny, Jessica suddenly stabs Olhide from behind. She then reveals as Elzard, the frenzied king of dragons. After she demands that Irina come with her quietly, Ginny attacks Elzard, trying to stop her however, her magic spells are blocked by Elzard's barrier. She then knocks out Ginny, and when Irina surrenders, Elzard grabs Irina, and flies her out of the arena. In the school infirmary, Olhide wakes up and reveals that Irina was taken by Elzard the frenzied dragon. Goldie is shocked to find Elzard is the dragon which almost destroyed the world thousands ago and wonders why she took Irina. Ard states he will bring Irina back no matter who his opponent will be. Then, Olhide brings Ard to the royal treasury and tells him to enter by himself. Jack then talks with Olhide about Ard and Irina. Elsewhere, Irina awakens from her nightmare about Ard. Irina learns that her hands are bound by a red transparent magic orb and are encased with a magical tube. Elzard greets Irina and tells her that she's going to start the ritual. Irina asks Elzard why she kidnapped her. Elzard responds by saying that she needs her blood, making Irina realize that Elzard knows her real identity. Elzer then shows a monster she calls the Orphan of Chaos, which is created from many evil gods flesh killed by the demon Lord Varvados. Elzer reveals that by sacrificing Irina's blood to the monster, she can summon an evil god sealed in the other dimension to destroy the world. Irina says she won't let it happen and claims Ard will come to save her. Even though Elzer acknowledges Ard's strength, she feels there is no need to worry because he is just an ordinary human after all. Elzer then approaches Irina and wonders what will happen if Ard finds out her secret. Moreover, she says that she believes Ard will hate her and call her a monster. Seeing the despair in Irina's eyes, Elzer decides to start the ritual. Ginny approaches Ard and asks him if he is going to save Irina. Ard confirms it and because it is very dangerous, he won't take Ginny with him. Ginny recalls the suffering she experienced because she had no friends and remembers Irina who was angry because Elzer hurt her and asks Ard to bring Irina home safely. But before Ginny finishes her sentence, Ard can already understand what she is saying. Ard then says that he will return before dinner, and asks Ginny to prepare dinner as he believes Irina will be hungry when she comes home. Before leaving, Ard tells Ginny that Irina is not the only one who considers her a friend, but he also does. At Irina's location, she looks terrified as the monster is going to eat her. Fortunately, Ard comes in time to rescue her. He slays the monster and eliminates all of the monsters and frees Irina from her captor. Ard apologizes for being late, but Irina is relieved and hugs him. Elzer hovers in the sky witnessing everything from above, amazed with the strong opponent she will face off. Ard calms Irina and asks her not to worry about it because Elzer is no match for him. However, Elzer mocks Ard who likes a monster and tells him that Irina is not as pure as he thinks of. 
Moreover, she tells Ara that Irina is a fake name and Irina's real name is Laville, and she carries the blood of the evil gods. Back at Olhide's manor, Olhide tells Jack that in a world with a religion centered on a demon king, all evil gods were considered enemies. If they as the royal family were found to be carrying the blood of an evil god, it could bring down the country. Therefore, Olhide and her daughter are forced to keep their identities a secret and therefore Irina has no friends. Back to Elzer to laugh about the revelation she just told to Ard, he doesn't care one bit about it because he knows Irina is better and braver than any others. He emphasizes that Irina is a person worthy of being loved and respected and he won't forgive Elzer for calling her a monster. In light of this, Elzer casts a lightning spell against Ard, but is surprised to see that he doesn't activate his defense magic to block it. Instead, he nullifies it with his spear and seemingly defeats her when Ard launches his spear into her, causing Elzer to explode. As it turns out, Elzer is still alive and fully transformed into her full dragon form. She then breathes a purple laser spell against Ard, who defends against it with his magical barrier. Seeing the horror of Ard's power, Elzer says that Irina is a monster, but he is much more terrifying that it is impossible for the two of them to remain friends and believes that Irina will be afraid of him and betray him without hesitation. Elzer's words almost affect Ard, but Irina encourages him. Believing that Irina will not leave him, Ard begins his ultimate attack to finish off Elzard. After the fight is over, Ard approaches Irina and asks her if she is still willing to be his friend. Irina answers that she will be his friend and Ard invites her to go home because Ginny has prepared dinner for them. Irina thinks of how Ard still accepts her even after finding out her secret and promises to herself that she will be stronger so she can stay by Ard's side. Slyfy completes her three-year training in the Phantom Forest dungeon to impress her sister Lydia. However, when she reaches the outside city, she's left astounded by everything. After nearly being struck by a couple of wagons, Slyfy hides in an alleyway and is approached by a masked individual. He informs Slyfy that instead of three years, she's been gone for 3,000 years. The two then walk and talk by the city's river, and he informs Slyfy that Varvados and her sister, Lydia, are dead, but Varvados' soul has been since reincarnated as Ardmir. The Academy will soon be holding a festival including a stage show that Golden wants Ard to perform. Gold also revealed that they received a threatening letter from an organization called Lars Al Ghul, and therefore he wants Ard to take part in the show and patrol throughout the Academy. Gold believes Ard can handle the threat that may occur. Before Ard responds, Irina gives her approval, but is protested by Ard who doesn't want to drag Irina and Ginny in danger. However, Irina tells Ard not to worry because she and Ginny will fight together. Ard says the lack of people to patrol around the Academy, knowing ordinary students won't be able to help. Gold then informs him that Olivia is currently doing interviews to hire people to help Ard with the mission. Knowing Olivia's character, Ard is sure that she is planning something. Afterward, Ard is confronted by a livid Slyfy, who approaches Ard and demands to know why he reincarnated and the whereabouts of Lydia, but Ard pretends not to know anything. Olivia, who knows Silphy from 3,000 years ago, is interested in Silphy's words. Silphy then challenges Ard in a duel, and when Ard wins, Silphy loses her patience and is scolded by Irina, who makes her cry because Irina reminds her of Lydia. Ard's class decides that the show should be themed around the life of the demon king Varvados with Ard as Varvados due to popular requests, Irina as Lydia, and Silphy as the evil god. Next, the topic of discussion is the theme of the event they'll be hosting. It's by Ginny's suggestion that they do a maid cafe with the maids wearing sexy outfits designed by Ginny that the girls only agree to wear after learning that they will be allowed to serve Ard. Unbeknownst to them all, they were being observed by the masked man who approached Slyfy back in the city and is eager to see how Silphy's reaction when she finds out what happened 3,000 years ago. Ard and Irina attend the school festival under the guise of a couple, but in reality, they are patrolling it because of a threat by Lars Al Ghul. Just then, they hear the loud voice, and as they look for the source, it turns out Silphy starts a commotion by causing an explosion and threatening an older man that he's a demon. Olivia then enters the scene and vouches for the older man, claiming he's a staff member of a restaurant she frequents and learned to make french fries there. Due to the incident, Olivia excuses Silphy from her duty and Irina suggests that Slyphy help out with their class activity, and she reluctantly agrees. Ard and Irina then shift their attention to the large tree. Irina states she feels weird whenever she looks at the tree. Ard then tells her a legend about Laville III, the great sword king who had sealed a unique item in that spot. Irina then mentions that not even her father knew what was buried underneath the tree. Curiously, Ard asks if Olivia knows what's buried there, but she cannot answer due to her bound circumstances. Ard then concludes it is something important. Olivia talks about the sword battle tournament and Ard believes Olivia will win the tournament. 
However, she doubts that as she enters herself and Art into it, much to his dismay. Art explains he is going to take part in a play. Olivia states that he will carry out both duties and insists he participates in the sword battle tournament. In front of the classroom, Art comments on the name his friends use for the maid's cafe. As he is about to enter, Sylphie breaks the wall and goes berserk as a male student tries to touch her. Ard takes care of the matter and is invited to the cafe. Several girls line up and offer to treat him but are interrupted by Irina, who barges in the cafe. Irina changes into a maid outfit and says that she will take care of Ard's treatment. As the girls argue about treating Ard, an announcement is heard, telling everyone that the sword festival to commemorate Cain Laville III is about to start. For the 100th anniversary, the winner of the tournament will receive a replica of the Holy Sword, Vald Galgulus. Silphy, Irina, and Ginny decide to take part, and they again fight over Ard. However, Silphy clearly wants to get the sword more because Vald Galgulus is her sister's sword. The next day, everyone packed the arena impatiently waiting for the King of Swords tournament. Olivia, Silphy, Irina, and also Ard are introduced by the commentator, but because Silphy is the only one unknown, she almost cries and Irina comforts her. Each participant has started their respective battles, and in the preliminary round of Block 8, Ginny faces a male student who looks strong. It is proven that when the man lashes out at her, Ginny is sent flying to the audience bench. Seeing that Ginny's chances of losing are getting bigger, Ard shouts to encourage her. Ginny's spirit rises again, and as if she has gained new strength, she goes forward and succeeds in knocking out her opponent. A female student approaches Ard and asks Irina and Sylphie, who are sitting next to him, to help them in the cafe because it is busy. After leaving the arena, Jenny goes to see Ard. Knowing that Sylphie is busy, she invites Ard to take part in the Miss and Mr. Beauty contest. Actually, Ard wants to decline the invitation as he must patrol. Jenny then excuses that there are many people in the contest so he can do his duty there. Ard finally agrees and as he mingles with other students who are also watching the contest, he spots Elrado in the middle of the crowd. On the stage, a contestant named Lilith is called to go and Elrado is coming to see her and give support. Ard walks closer to Elrado and is surprised to see him who looks different. A frightened Elrado begs Ard not to kill him and explains that he only comes to watch Lilith. When Ginny comes on the stage, Elrado realizes that Ginny has changed. He can see Ginny has become much stronger since she met Ard. Elrado then explains why he bullied Ginny and feels relieved because Ard beat him so that Ginny could change. Ard asks if Elrado has overcome his guilt and Elrado responds that he will bear it for life and hopes that he can apologize to Ginny someday. Hearing that, Ard feels guilty for Sylphie for not telling her the truth. The winner of the beauty contest is announced and Ginny and Ard become the winner of the contest. Ginny feels overjoyed and didn't expect that she could win. Ard tells Ginny that she must be more proud of herself. Ginny thanks him for his encouraging words and feels that she can love herself now. Afterward, Ginny and Ard return to the cafe and find it is packed with customers and Irina who sees Ginny's trophy is upset because she should have joined the competition. The next morning in the third match of the King of Swords tournament, Olivia faces off against Ard. Olivia tries to force Ard to reveal his true power, but Ard refuses and accidentally blows Olivia away. This causes Ard to be disqualified for using a forbidden spell, and Olivia forfeits for not being able to make it back in time for her match. In the next battle, Ginny faces Irina. Ginny continues their argument regarding her harem plans while continuing to fight until Irina finally comes off victorious. The masked man was disappointed with the events so far and decided to manipulate him a little. On the day of the play, Irina is notably nervous about the performance and Ard tries to console her, but his efforts seem futile to him. Later the play is performed, which Ard notes depicted the Avia Dessa Veer's battle, a battle he won thanks to Sylphie setting magic traps on the battlefield and taking the enemy commander Demise Argus' sword. Despite the mistakes that occur throughout the play, the performance ends with a standing ovation from the audience. Ard and Irina talk about the threatening letters, but find out that nothing serious happened during the festival, making them wonder about the purpose behind it. Meanwhile, Sylphie leaves the stage where she sees a woman with long hair who looks like Lydia. While chasing her, Sylphie meets the masked man who came to her when she had just come out of the dungeon. The next day in the finals of the Sword King tournament, Sylphie defeats Irina and claims victory over the sword replica. Later, Ard meets her near a tree where Sylphie reveals that the replica is actually a real Vald Galgulus and that the object sealed in the tree is the source of its power. Sylphie combines the two into a complete Vald Galgulus and summons Demise Argus before trying to kill Ard. The masked man watches the scene happily revealing that he puts Sylphie under his control and shows her the memories of Ard killing Lydia. Ard returns to his demon king Varvido's form and tries to stop Sylphie. It's the voice of Lydia that finally calms Slyphy down enough to break the manipulation spell cast on her. 
At that moment, the masked man appeared, and now wielding the swords tried to kill Art himself, revealing he needed to sacrifice Irina to revive his true master, but lost his right arm and control of the blades. In the end, the masked man is seemingly destroyed. An apparition of Lydia appears and tells Sylphie that her death was not Art's fault. Lydia also advises her sister to enjoy her life and promises that one day they will meet again. Riding on a carriage, Art sits in between Ginny and Irina as they all play a game of cards while en route to their school trip destination. While Irina wins the game several times, Ginny is angry for losing the game ten times in a row. As Irina asks Ginny to continue the game to the next round without warning, time freezes for nearly everything aside from Art's group, and they fall into an abyss and land in a grayish-white void and are greeted by a young boy who introduces himself as God. Art asks why God called them and he tells them about an entity that will try to destroy the world, and he asks them to defeat it. They wake up in the wilderness and see two moons in the sky. Art explains that they have been sent to ancient times. Art further informs that the place is the great country of the demon king Varvidos, the Makina district of the Vardia Empire. Remembering the order given by God, Ard believes that if they succeed in defeating the entity mentioned, they will return to the present time. Just then, a scream is heard and when they check it, they find a girl being attacked by a dead stinger. Even though this shouldn't be their business, Ard decides to step in and help the girl. He uses his magic power and detonates the death stinger in an instant. After Ard reunites with Ginny and Irina, they are approached by a woman who thanks them for saving her underling. Ginny and Irina are surprised to recognize that the woman is Olivia, but Olivia doesn't recognize either of them and wonders if they have met before. Ard makes up an excuse and says that Ginny and Irina are Olivia's admirers. When Olivia releases her power, Irina and Ginny, who are unable to withstand the pressure, fall unconscious while Ard is still standing and not affected in the slightest. Impressed, Olivia invites them to come with her to the city. Olivia tells them that she wants Ard to join her army to defeat creatures from another world. She considers Ard quite skilled in magic considering the power of his spell which was able to destroy the Death Stinger easily. Ard says he will accept the request, but with two conditions where Olivia has to allow Irina and Ginny to join too. Olivia then asks him whether Ard wants the two girls to die quickly, but Ard says that he will definitely protect them. For the second condition, Ard wants Olivia to enlist them as part of Verda's forces. Olivia is surprised and regrets that a man as strong as Ard wants to be a logistical supporter, but she decides to accept all the conditions. After being escorted to Verda headquarters, Ard believes that by being there, the chances of Ginny and Olivia being in danger are almost impossible, but suddenly the building in front of them explodes and Ginny wonders if an accident happened. Among the piles of rubble of destroyed buildings, a girl exclaims that her experiment went perfectly. She then approaches Ginny and Irina and says that her genius has just exploded. Ginny wonders if it will be a problem since the research center building is destroyed and worries that Verda will be angry. The girl says that Verda will not be angry because this has happened often. Ginny says that they come to meet Verda and ask the girl to call her. The girl indicates that she is Verda, but when Irina takes out her game card, she is shocked because Verda's actual appearance is very different from the one on the card. Verda scolds the two of them and tells them not to judge someone by their appearance. After using her magic to restore the building, she invites them to come in. Verda was confused because it was unusual for someone to want to be her subordinate, but she turned hysterical because she thought they were her fans. Seeing the excitement, Irina was a little doubtful that the girl was really Verda, and so was Ginny. Verda says that she already knows what happened to Olivia, and after hearing Ard's explanation, she is excited knowing that the three of them come from the future. Verda agrees to accept the three as her subordinates and promises to help them return to the present time. Suddenly, the door behind them is opened and Irina and Ginny are surprised to see Sylphie appear. Sylphie tries to catch Verda and calls her sister. Ard freezes in place when she finds Lydia standing in front of him. Lydia immediately catches Verda and scolds her. To calm Lydia down, Verda offers her to take Irina and Ginny. As soon as she sees Ginny, Lydia is fascinated by her appearance. Ard, who can't bear to see what Lydia did to Ginny, then takes her away from Ginny and tells her they just came into the city and are tired. Lydia is upset and grabs Ard's collar shirt and challenges him to a duel. Ard accepts the challenge without any objection while Ginny and Irina are asked to stay in Verda's place. Lydia goes to a barren hill to duel with Ard. Lydia begins to attack Ard severely and sends him flying and hitting the rocks. Ard comments on Lydia's bad behavior and lands a kick. Both of them continue to fight until they are exhausted and they lie down on the ground. Ard notices Lydia's closeness with the Demon Lord and wants to ask her favor to gain an audience with the Demon Lord. Lydia doesn't mind it but she says Varvados must refuse it if she asks him. She then advises Ard to gain something to get Varvados to trust and he can meet Varvados in person. 
Elsewhere, Ginny and Irina live in a house belonging to a girl named Latima. After seeing the girl, her words make Ard remember how he killed Lydia with his own hands. In the battle, Ard easily captures the enemy's general. Lydia, who has just come as surprised to find the battle is over. Moreover, Ard managed to defeat the enemy's general whom they were eager to defeat. Sylphie is annoyed and claims Ard stole their target, but Irina tells them that Ard is that great. Lydia compliments Ard's accomplishment and gets a chance to meet Farvidos. On the way to the castle, Ginny and Irina are amazed with the castle which begins to be seen from afar. Arriving at the castle, they are fascinated with the parts of the castle, but Sylphie tells them that her sister's castle is a million times more beautiful than the Demon Lord's castle. Almost reaching the room where Varvados is, they are ambushed by Alvardo who claims it is his way to give a compliment for Ard's accomplishment. Lydia interrupts Alvardo and says if he wants a duel, she will be his opponent. Just then, Varvados appears and reprimands Lydia and Alvardo who always act up. Fascinated by Varvados' appearance, Ginny cannot stand it and almost faints. Varvados then pushes Alvardo away and turns to Ginny and Irina. Seeing the two girls showing interest in Varvados, Ard feels jealous of himself. Varvados takes Ard and the others to his room and Ard feels jealous of Varvados and Lydia's closeness. Irina and Ginny talk about Varvados and call him the Demon Lord, but Varvados doesn't have a clue about what they are talking about. Ard makes up an excuse for the matter and feels weird as Varvados should have gained the title of Demon Lord. Varvados then tells them there is someone who bears the title. Returning to Verda's place, they discuss it further. Verda assumes the Demon Lord which Ard, Ginny, and Irina know is different from the Demon Lord he knows. Therefore, the history Ard knows is different from history from their dimension. Ard thinks of God's words and realizes that he has mistaken God's words. God demanded them to defeat the demon lord in the dimension to restore history and after that, they can return to the present time. Ginny suggests telling the truth to Varvidos, but they have to do something impressive to gain an audience with Varvidos. Ard leaves Irina and Ginny and joins Lydia and Sylphie to face off against Mevelez the Curse King whom Ard remembers as the one who cursed Lydia and forced Varvidos to kill her. However, as they arrive at Mevelus's fort, they find Mevelus has been murdered by an armored knight who introduces himself as the Demon Lord. He then declares war on Varvados and conquers the world. In the castle, Olivia is about to start a meeting about the war declaration from the Demon Lord. However, a man from the Council of Seven Objects to the presence of Ard, Irina, and Ginny. He is then told that the three of them are present with permission from Verda and Lydia. Moreover, Varvados emphasizes that what they had done was a contribution that could not be ignored. Barvidevus then explains the strategy in which they will counter the Demon Lord at full strength and end the battle on the same day. Four generals are assigned on a battlefield and Varvidos will also join. Alvarda laughs, feeling happy with Varvidos' strategy, and so does Lydia, who feels excited because it has been a long time since she and Varvidos last fought together. Sophie protests and comments that Varvidos doesn't need to step in. The members of the council also object to the idea, fearing that it can lower the defense of each district and the enemy troops will all attack at once. Varvados understands their concern, but he reminds them that they are going to end the battle in one day. Ard asks Varvados how to deal with the demon lord who claims immortality. Varvados keeps his plans for this a secret and tells him that a battle will be held in the next three days and his only order is to destroy the castle held by the enemy. Returning to Latima's house in his room, Ard learns that history has changed and people who have died are still alive and Lydia is not cursed. He thinks of God's words to change history and is surprised by the presence of the Demon Lord. Ard asks him what brings him to his room. The Demon Lord explains that history cannot be restored easily as the corrective power will take its course and that Lydia will face the same fate as her correct timeline. Ard then asks if the Demon Lord comes from another period of time. He then reveals himself to be Ard from another reality and proves it by removing his mask, surprising Ard. He also knows that Ard comes from the future, and so does himself. Although they are the same person, their birth worlds are different, so they have different experiences. Even so, both of them lived as Varvados. The Demon Lord tells Ard that he reincarnated as Ard Midir and gained many things and he will lose everything, while Ard hasn't lost anything. The Demon Lord claims himself as a failure, so he discards the name Ard Meteor and now calls himself Disaster Rogue. Furthermore, Ard asks the Demon Lord how he got there, and the Demon Lord reveals that he too was sent to that era by the Nameless God, and his goal is to save Lydia from her fated demise and hopes that Ard joins him in his cause. Then, Ard asks if Rogue discussed the matter with Varvados. Rogue shakes his head and says he hates himself from that time because he was a fool so he lost Lydia. Ard asks again why Rouge is against Varvados at that time. He thinks that if Rogue wants to save Lydia, he is doing a stupid thing, and is shocked when hearing Rogue's response. He asks what the correlation is between destroying the world and rescuing Lydia. 
Rouge asks him back if he remembers how Lydia died. Ard confirms it and says that he won't ever forget that. It makes Rogue conclude that Ard understands how he feels. Ard responds that in order to fight the last one, he has to bear great risk, including losing Lydia, knowing it is something Ard can't handle. Ard thinks to avoid and forget the last enemy so that Lydia can be safe. Rogue grabs Ard's collar angrily and asks why he didn't tell about that, and Ard admits it is all his fault. Lydia went to the enemy's territory by herself and lost and became a threat to the world. Rogue releases Ard and admits he couldn't bear the guilt and decided to commit suicide, but the world didn't let him rest, and he reincarnated as Ard Meteor. Rogue then intends to save Lydia, becoming a threat the world hates and being killed. After Lydia goes through the path he had previously taken, Rogue believes that everything will end. When Rogue reaches out his hand, Ard almost takes it but Lydia's voice makes him stop. Rogue then leaves but before disappearing, he says that he will wait for Ard's answer in three days. Latima comes to see Ard and tells him that breakfast is ready. Walking to the dining room, Ard asks Latima if she has been with Lydia for a long time. Latima confirms it and Ard asks again which one she will choose if she has to weigh Lydia's life with her own. Latima comments that Ard is asking something stupid and says that she will do anything for Lydia. In the dining room, Ard sits on the chair without saying anything. Lydia approaches Ard and asks him to accompany her. They then go to the city where they buy snacks and Lydia teases a girl. Lydia then tells Ard to tease a girl if he wants to be called the true warrior. Ard calls her stupid and they start to fight. After satisfied beating each other, Ard and Lydia lay down on the ground. Lydia asks Ard if he has cleared his mind. In his response, Ard states that although she is foolish, she has a sharp instinct. He then asks what she will do if she has to sacrifice everything to get someone she treasures back. Lydia asks if Ard can use flying magic and tells him that she wants to show something. Later, they arrive at a ruined site and Lydia tells him it is the sin she committed. As several ghosts emerge from the ground, Ard asks why the spirits of dead people inhabit the area. The group of ghosts merge into a large figure and charge at Lydia angrily. Another ghost crawling from the underground curses Lydia for killing its son. Lydia informs that the place used to be a city inhabited by demons. They attack that place because the area was a strategic point in the war so they had to take the city. Lydia also said that it was quite easy for her and her troops to take down the castle and its guards but it was difficult to occupy it because the townspeople didn't want to listen. The townspeople even attempted attacks day and night so Lydia ordered her troops to massacre them because her colleagues would be the victims otherwise. Lydia realized that her actions were not right. As for her, humans and demons are no different, and she was just a murderer. Even though she was aware of that, she continued to dirty her hands and deserved to be called a monster. Lydia also says that she has decided how to die and will continue to fight. When there is nothing that threatens humans or demons and a world without sadness is created, that's when she will die horribly. Lydia tells him that she is not a worthy person for R to change his stance or even sacrifice himself. R then asks Lydia to consider his feelings if she dies that way. Lydia says that sins must be atoned for so that she can die with pride. She strokes Ard's head and asks him not to change her death. In the ensuing battle, Ard sneaks away to give the Rove the answer. He decides not to save Lydia because that is what she wants. Rove attacks Ard but because their abilities are the same, no one can win. Rove reveals that he arranged for the battle to occur at the same time as their duel to distract Ard. Meanwhile, Irina is upset that Ard left her and Ginny. Latima then takes them on a mission to destroy the crystal that is the source of Rogue's immortality, but when they reach it, Latima betrays Arena and Jinini. She raises both of them on a magic barrier cross and reveals that she works for Rogue. At the time, Rue shows the girls who are taken hostage and tells Ard to join him or they will die. He says that he will kill anyone only to save Lydia. Arena and Jinni escape from the cross using the unusual magic taught by Ard. Without fear, Latima summons an army of monsters and says she will kill anyone to save Lydia but Lydia arrives at the place because she has installed a tracking device on Ginny and Irina. She defeats the monster and knocks out Latima and then destroys the crystal. After losing his immortality, Rove attacks Ard in anger. Both of them remember the time they had an argument with Lydia which Ard and Rove both regretted. Lydia's apparition restrains Rove and allows Ard to kill him. As soon as he dies, Ard, Irina, and Ginny start to disappear. Lydia who knows they are from the future, then asks Ginny and Irina whether the people in the world are happy. When they confirm it, Lydia asks them to convey a message to Ard. In the white void, God thanks Ard for succeeding. He will not identify himself but says that he is an ally. The three of them wake up in the present not long after they left, while Olivia and Sylphie scold the three for falling asleep. After getting off the train, Irina conveys Lydia's message to Ard that no matter what happens, they will always be friends. Irina goes first, catching up with Ginny, while Ard remains silent in his place. 
Lydia's apparition appears and pushes Ard's back and Ard smiles in relief before turning to meet Guinea and Irina who are waiting for him. This is the end of Shiju Sekyu no Dei Mao. Thank you so much for staying in this channel and watching our videos. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel so we can keep you updated with our latest contents. See you in the next video.